Dave's now a financial advisor and a lawyer walk into a bar. And then what happens, Dave? Well, it comes out. It says, I've just had a new baby. Or maybe it's a grandchild in the family. What should I consider? Oh, good topic. Good topic because there seems to be there's some legal issues and estate planning issues, obviously. But there's also, I think, some bigger kind of philosophical questions about how do you want to be spending your time, you know, how you reprioritise your life when you've got a new baby or, or a new grandchild in your life. Yep. Yep, um, big, yep. big questions for people to have a think about, I reckon. Yeah, and I think those questions are sitting right over the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it, this is something that my mind is focused on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, it's funny. I, I kind of thought it would all be, it'd be, you know, you get, get your spreadsheet out and you get your plan out, you know, being a lawyer or, or being, you know, a financial advisor, you get your, your calculator out maybe and think about saving for the future and stuff. And, and I think, look, there's, there's, that's part of it. But I think the much bigger question is, well, hang on, how do I want to be spending my time? Do I want to be working like a maniac on my business for the next um, 20 years or do I want to be spending some time with my kids or with my grandkids, you know, as the, as the case may be? Yeah. Um, uh, I think they're much bigger questions, really, that, that you, you've got to think, well, you know, when, when you look back over your life, is, is the time you spent with your kids going to be more important than the time you spent building your empire or, or what? Yeah, so to me there's the practical side and then there's also the emotional side. And yeah. there's no doubt about it in some of the discussions that we might, might have with people is that probably more so when a grandchild comes along. Yeah. And, again, look, we won't... Um, you know, well, let's talk about the stereotypical situation. I think in a lot of circumstances it's the male who may have been very busy in the work, loving mm. their business and doing everything else, and they potentially reflect upon, oh, did I really spend that much time with my own kids? Yeah. Do I, do I want to, you know, do the same to my grandchildren? Here's an opportunity. Like I, I, I'm with you. I think a lot of it does become a, it, it sort of regrounds a few people and, and wants them to sit back and think. If I had my time again, yeah. what would I do differently? Yeah, yeah. So that to me, grandkids are a chance to do it do it differently. Yeah, and to kind of say I've I've been successful in my business, and and you know, can I take this as an opportunity one to spend time with their partner, but also with their daughter or or, or son, daughter in law, son in law kind of yep. scenario, and, yep. and just just to nurture those early development stages of. Of a kind of a young child. I mean, it's yep. as, as um, sleepless as the nights can be. The beauty of being the grandparent is you can give them back. <laughs> and give them back at night time when they're a disaster area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all wound up, especially when they get a bit older and you can load them up with sugar and a few things. <laughs> <laughs> then hand them on back. Yeah, there you go. They're screaming. That's time for yeah. you to do it. But, yeah, yeah look, I think it's a really challenging question when we start to say to people, look, we've just had a new baby or a a grandchild, what are the things that I should consider as the yeah. topic for today? Yeah. And, again, part of it, as you said, is the is the functional side. So, you know, and this can be the father or the grandfather or grandmother. Do we want to educate? How do we want to educate the child? Do I start, you know, potentially looking at an investment strategy for one child or does it, does it to, to enable you to assess across your broader family. Well, if I start for yeah. one, what do I do for the others? And and and, that, and that's where it does become a really interesting discussion and there's some very simple things that, that people can, you know, kick off very early that yeah. will cascade through either to the children or the grandchildren in time to come. Yeah. Well, certainly if you're thinking about yourself and your business, you obviously if you've got a kid uh, uh, on the way or a new kid that's arrived, and even a grandkid, then you're going to have to change they're going to have to budget for that because there's going yep. to be an expense, yep. um, but for you and your family, um, maybe less so with grand, grandparents, but might might well be the same. And there's also going to be um, potential, you potentially want to save for them to buy a house one day or, or, you know, you might want to assist them in their life. So there's kind of a two-pronged financial yep. uh, thing going on for you to address. And, and if, if your clients come to you and, and, you know, they've got kids on the way or a new kid has arrived, do you sit down with them and go through, okay, well, let's open a bank account and start buying shares for them or is, is that, you know? Look, that, that, it, that, the question to that, which is I'll use the legal term, it depends. Classic. Classic today. You stole it. You know, yeah. I like to sort of, you know, I'm, I'm learning, Alex. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you, yes, it does. It depends. It, it depends upon a person's circumstances. Yeah. So, and it varies on where their priorities are. So for some people, um, 
you know, the, the public education system they're quite comfortable with. So they're like, yep. well, do I really need to invest for that? If it's a private system, look, yep. there could be a different story. Um, yep. People may want to sort of uh, progressively drip away. There's a whole range of different strategies around yep. that. A lot of it is, um, you know, probably surviving the first 12 months, really, yep. with the new baby. Yep. If it's your first yep. one, second and third, you're kind of a little bit more familiar with it and a bit of, probably a bit battle-scarred already, so you're aware of yep. what's about to come your way. But definitely it, there is some very simple things that you can start which then helps you chip away at it. But yep. we would also then have that very important discussion. So that's one aspect of it is the investment, but also to reassess your estate planning. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which probably really falls back into your domain from yeah. a legal point of view because yeah. now your circumstances have changed. You need to then determine. Um, yeah. And I think the research is really high that um, very few people within their estate planning process nominate a guardian to look after the child if both yeah. parents were deceased. Yes. Yes. I've been saying for years to all my clients, you know, if you if you have kids and you don't have a will, you're mad, right? Yep. So that, yeah, that's another that's another Alexism. You're mad. Yep. That's I mean, you, you can survive without a will, I think, if it's just you, because ultimately, you know, if you die, your problems are over. But if you got if you got kids, then then you know you. I mean, there's no parent in the world who doesn't want the best for their kids. So yep. you want the best for your kids after you're gone, and uh, and a will's just a, a basic building block to do that. And then beyond that, I think you also need to be thinking about your business because sometimes, and we've we've discussed this separately, but your will isn't necessarily enough um, yep. to attract your business assets. Your will concerns your personal assets, whereas your business assets, if they're in a company or whatever, often they're dealt with by buy sell or by some other agreement. Yep. Um, so you just need to have all of that. In order, so that that when you're if if you're injured or if you're you pass away, and in perhaps if both parents pass away suddenly, you know which can happen, then uh, then then there's there's um, there's something in place so to take the stress out of it in terms of, of what happens to your children with um, assets and with you know control and who looks after them in the meantime before they come of age and so on. Um, you know they're just they're really important critical things that everyone should every parent should have. Uh, and possibly even um, grandparents should be thinking about that, you know, th- thinking about um, making Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, we, I, we, we get the comment from people, and I, I get it especially where they, they'll say, oh, you're being morbid. Why do we need to talk about our will? Why, why are you yeah. talking about being, you know, what happens if one or both of us die? Yeah. I, I, I don't kind of look at it from being a morbid situation. I'm like, well, yeah, but what, what would you want? Like what are the circumstances you would like that uses an opportunity to reassess what, what's really important to you? And put some structures in place that mean that that is the way it gets done. Otherwise, you can say, I don't want to talk about it, it's being morbid, then you're just allowing someone to pick up the dice and hoping they're going to roll two sixes for you. Yeah, 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 that's right. You're, like, just, you're, you're, going, to give them, you're going to have an outcome, yeah. but it may not be the outcome that you would have liked to have seen happen. Yeah, and it may, it may be that the outcome causes tension amongst your family correct, or whatever. Correct, Whereas correct, if correct. people knew what you wanted, they go, okay, I know that, I want my kids looked after by my sister or whatever, then everyone's clear about that and they don't end up having a dispute about it. Yep. Um, and you've saved everyone. And the reality is about this morbid stuff. I mean, the reality is you and I and everyone who's listening to this is going to be dead at some point. Right? Absolutely. You know, that, you know, that, maybe that's a morbid thing. But, I mean, we're all going to die. It's just a question of when. When. And it's not, yes, it's not an if, it's when. Yeah. It's and when. hopefully it is. You, you, everyone gets to lead a, a full life, but we know that that's not always the case. Yeah. Like that's yeah. just, a, again, that is the re- reality of life. And, yeah. you know, the, there's always the uh, school holidays, long weekends, these sorts of things. We get the news story that, unfortunately, you know, either a family or, you know, certain members of a family, there's a car accident or something that yeah, occurs yeah, yeah. that the brings the reality to it. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. bang, something occurs. Yeah. So, you know, we want to kind of talk about that. So, yeah. again, the topic for today is, you know, we've just had a new baby and either as a parent or a grandparent, what are some of the things that we should consider? Yeah. So that's what yeah. we're sort of really sort of talking about today. But yeah. I also think it's important to think about from the emotional side, you know, yeah. does that change your broader family dynamics with yeah. aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews and those sorts of things? And depending upon your own success, what does that deal with? But just that importance of, you know, the village helping you bring the child up. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I, I think you, you might look at your own business and the, the, the time you spend on things differently. Yep. Um, as you say, particularly, I think grandparents sometimes go, oh, hang on a second, 
this is my take two and I'm going to do it better this time. I'm going to yeah, spend some yeah. more time, which might mean making changes in your business. And you might need to do this. You might need to plan ahead to do this, but making changes in your business where, you know, the day-to-day functioning of your business is less dependent on you. And yeah. that's something we've talked about in the past, but I think it's a really important theme that so many small business people are just all consumed by their business. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be like that. If you want to have a successful small business, you don't have to be consumed by it you know some people are naturally and there's nothing they can do about it yeah they're workaholics um, they're workaholics yeah but some people it just sort of happens by accident and there's actually things you can do to be just as successful but to delegate more effectively so that you have you know you can finish at a reasonable hour and you can you can you know you can take time away from the business and the business can keep um, can keep heading in the right direction. That's very possible. If you've got staff, I mean, one of the wisest things my dad ever said to me is he said that the more people who work for me, the less work I've got to do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, and you're very good at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite well. Good he, delegation. He had seven kids, right? So he's done something right. And he, 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 he you know, was ran in, worked in a big business. But, you know, normally the more people you got to work, for you, the more stressed you are, yep. which it, I, mean, I can understand the logic in that, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you've got more in your team, then the, the team should actually be handling more, which then allow you to spend time with your family, which will free up time for you to be a better you know, parent and a better leader at the business. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. There is actually yep. a better way, and I'm, I'm a big believer in that because I think your business can just can just drive you into an early grave and drive you away from yeah, your family. Definitely towards them, you know, and so you think you're building this business for your kids and actually you're building a wall between yourself and your kids. Yes, yes. And so having this new child, baby, in, into the family environment is not a flip the switch and everything has to change. Yeah. It's a little bit of a catalyst that can just give you a little bit of a jolt that reminds you that it's like, you know, why am I doing this? Like, mm-hmm. again, what is the purpose of my business and what is the purpose of the time that I have available to me, is it yeah. do I want to spend more time in the office or the, my business or yeah. do I actually want to spend more time with the people that I like to spend time with? Yeah. Like, and, and it just helps you gradually move towards it, where it may change some of your mindset towards where your priorities lie. Yeah, And sure. it's challenging. Like I'm not, you know, people say, oh, but, you know, I, you know, there's always challenges with this and, and it is just an opportunity to sit back and reflect and, and reassess what options you may or may not have available to you. Yeah. And if those options are not available, what are the steps that we can do to give you that capacity to make, to give you that choice around yeah. what it is you want to do? Yeah. Well, uh, it's interesting you raised um, education before because I know some of um, my family and friends were were um, in the category of, of being comfortable with the, the public system and you know being living near a school that they thought was quite good um, that they want to send their kids to and they formed the view that the kind of sacrifice they'd have to make in order to send the kids to a private school um, wasn't worth it for their yep. family. You know, yep. in total, when they're looking at you know having to go back to work earlier or having to you know not having the money to hire a tutor or to send the kids to the sports they like or whatever, yep. and they thought on balance, and there's quite a few that fall into this category that I know, they thought on balance the, the, the public system is good for, for me and my family. But then as the kids have got older, for whatever reason, they've changed their mind about that. And then quite a lot of them have sent their kids to private schools once they maybe in year seven or, you know, a bit later on. Um, and thankfully they've been able to rejig their finances to make that happen. But I suppose the lesson I found in all of that is, is that you want to have the option Yes, you know, I agree. You want to be able to go, okay, this particular kid would benefit from, from a private education for yep. whatever reason. Maybe they're academic, maybe they're not academic, maybe they're sport, whatever it is that they're into. Um, you might have, you want to be able to go, well, if that's best for them, then I can afford it. Yep. And so, you know, early planning and, and talking to someone like you, Dave, you know, in the terms of being able to put a plan in place to, to be able to afford private education if you want that for Correct. your children. Correct. You may not, but you, I, I, you know, I think sometimes people don't want it and then, they change their mind and, and then it might be too late. So you want to be able to um, put yourself in a financial position if you can to be able to make a decision about that one way or the other. Yes, but also on the back of that, in having those discussions with people, more so when they've got a, a, a newish baby, they yeah. may sit on the fence and go, oh, no, I don't know, we'll, we'll be comfortable with the public system. And, and again, yeah. no, no issue with that. But they do, their minds do change. So therefore our advice through that is, Yes, if we do this, then we can build a, a, a um, an investment strategy or a savings strategy 
it can yeah. cascade through, and I'll, I'll talk very high level around some other stuff in a minute with a grandparent to a child. Yeah. But you're giving this option because the, the choice that then becomes, but also what we're asking people to do at the time, identify a potential private school you may want your child to go to and yeah. put them down on the list. Oh, yeah, yeah, so they can get in. You've got to put them down as soon as they're born, don't you? So, in, in certain schools, definitely, yeah. there is an issue that, you know, you just cannot get them into the school. Now, that's not every school, yeah. but, but if you have a preference for something, yeah. so it's, it's almost a two, two-pronged approach. Yeah. But also that comes into this is that you can, and there's some very interesting investment products around that a grandparent may make a decision to help educate a child, and then look, they're referred to as investment bonds or, or education bonds, right? In a way that you can actually do it, and it can either be a lump sum or someone can contribute, and it's an investment environment that can just be added to and, and grow over the years. But a grandparent may make a decision to put, I don't know, and I'll use round numbers, anywhere from ten to say a hundred thousand into one of these, and there's a ten-year right. window where it's very tax effective. But in that oh, ten-year right? Yeah, yeah, so in that after that 10-year period, it can come out tax-free. And so yeah. you can draw down on that to help right. fund part of the... Um, right. So it just comes back to capital at the time and what you've got. But this yeah. is where th- there are some very interesting approaches that you can take because that also ties back into your intergenerational transfer. Yes, yes. So the grandparent may have a, um, uh, excess capital available to them and they see this as a way, and that can be managed through their estate planning process as well. Yes. Yeah. So, so you know, it's not a sort of this or that. There's a, there's a yes. range of different options based upon people's yes. circumstances. So, yes. you know, it's just, again, and sometimes it's not always a parent or the grandparent paying all of the fee. It might be they might give them a 50% and the, and the parent has to pay the other 50%. There's also yes. other options around yes. that. So a great idea. I mean, it seems to me one of the great sort of tragedies of life is that often by the time you can afford things, yeah, I, dare I say it, too old to enjoy them. Correct. <laughs> you know, so that by the time, you know, when you've got a young family, often you're just massive, you've just bought a house, you've, yep. you know, you've, you've bought a bigger car and all that sort of stuff, you're cash strapped. And then by the time you've had a bit of success and perhaps you're, you're towards the end of your career and your business is thriving and all of that, you've got plenty of cash and you don't really need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And but so, so, yes, which goes back to the issue around wealth activism. Yes. If you have um, proceeds and capital that may be considered excess, yes, you know you, you don't need to spend it, but therefore are there ways that you can distribute part of that whilst you're alive to see the individuals who are receiving it to enjoy the gift that you give? Yes, and enjoy it when they need it most. I mean, Correct. to get a, a private education that you believe is valuable um, uh, at a time in your life when perhaps you couldn't otherwise afford it, you know, rather than giving them giving them cash when they're 40 and they've got their own cash reserves, you know, you give them a good education when you can and it, it ties into transferring wealth back from the from the, the older generation to the younger generation in a tax-effective way. Yep. Everyone's a winner. Yep. And so we yep. say there's, there's two statements that we say to a lot of clients. There are two things that cannot be taken away from the receiver of this is education yeah. Yeah. and travel. Those yeah. two experiences, yeah. Yeah. once you've gone through the education, no one can take that education away from you. Yeah. And if yeah. you've travelled around, and that can be domestically and internationally, yeah. someone can show you books, they can talk to you about it. Yeah. But until you've actually done it, no yeah. one can take that memory of and that ex- the smells and the sights and the people. Yeah. No one can remove that from you. And so they're yeah. the two key things that we, we talk a lot to people about is one of the greatest gifts to give, especially to, to children, whether that be from the parent or the grandparent, is education. Yeah. Now, again, that education is not always just academic. Yeah. You know, that's, a, that's not a public versus private education argument. That can be about having the capacity to spend time with an individual to help educate them around experiences that they would not have received elsewhere. So yeah. that could be that could be working in a workshop with grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, could yeah, be yeah. that could be sailing. That could be yeah. you know yeah, motorbike right. like any any experience yeah. that they would normally not get. They do it with that individual and they and they yeah. hand over their knowledge. But that's also the issues around, you know, going away on family holidays. What are yeah. those experiences that people have 
that you yeah. pass on to the next generation and the current generation. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're a real advocate of those sorts of, you know, doing things for the experience rather yeah. than, as you said, waiting until someone's old and then says, oh, great, well, now, okay, great, you've given me half a million dollars, but I could have dealt with that 10 years ago. Yeah, well, this is when I really needed it. Yeah. Um, well, this experience thing, I think we might have to re- ring up a red balloon and see if we can get a sponsorship <laughs> from the podcast. <laughs> Experiences is uh, where it's at in terms of value, and I, I, I mean, I totally support that. I think, that, you know. That life's life's short enough, you know, you, and you, and a lot of it's well. In fact, in some ways, life's not short. It's just that we spent we waste a lot of it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, you want to use the time that you've got to do to to go out and do the things that you wanted to do, yep. or it'll pass you by. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think the baby, which is the topic of today's discussion, a baby or or a, or a grandchild, is really a time to kind of refocus that, take some practical steps in terms of financial planning, legal planning, um, to to look after that child, but also take some more some some bigger steps, I think, in your business and in your life to to manage your affairs in a way that's going to give you the the most out of your life and and, the, and yep. give them the most out of their lives. Well, we you know we've been which is very topical at the moment in 2022. We've sort of coming out of the back of this COVID pandemic. Yeah. People are starting to travel again. You know, those experiences are kind of coming back. And I do think there's there's been a uh, reassessment on what's important. Yeah, yeah. People have spent all their money on cars instead of on holidays and now they're going to go back to sell yeah. their cars and go on holidays yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah, and they can sell it for more than they bought it for two years yeah, ago because nice. the second-hand yeah. market's so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you on a personal level, I mean, I, I did a big trip, did a couple of big trips with my father um, before COVID, before COVID was on the radar. Um, and uh, and I remember they were expensive. They were, they were cruises, you know, which are expensive. And I remember thinking at the time, gee, that's a lot of money, you know, ooh, ooh, that's a lot of money. And then COVID came along and, of course, the chance of tra- travelling with my father disappeared, right, yep, for, yep. for a long time. And I thought I'm just so pleased that I took the, 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 took the opportunity when I had it and, and forget about the money, forget whatever it cost. It's a once-in-a-lifetime, yep. twice-in-a-lifetime sort of thing that we could do. And, if, and we've just booked another one now because we, we, we're now allowed to again, so we're going to get away again if we can. But there are things that, you know, it, it, money can't buy. You know? Correct. Correct. So, so that was a, a and COVID really, um, I think for me, really rammed that home. That if you have got the opportunity to travel with your family members, do it. Yeah, and you, you see these these adventurous holidays. You know, this yeah. uh, the you know walks throughout Australia, and you know there's the yeah. stuff in Central Australia and, and Tasmania, and then you look at some yeah. of the you know the Kokoda Trail and those sorts of you know adventure activities, and even the young ones love to do that. Yeah, you know they're like, oh, well, why wouldn't I? Let's go and that, for that real um, experience and track. You look at people trying to climb Everest. Jeepers! All right, they, they, yeah, but this is <laughs> for some people. Like they reckon it's really it's it's yeah. flat out. Clearly, yeah. you and I would just you know walk through that. That's the the yeah, only yeah. athletes that we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would both. Perish. <laughs> if you die doing it, it's probably not. No, we would that. delegate to our Sherpas to carry all our gear. And perhaps carry us. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that'd Maybe be- we'll just get to that bottom base camp. But I agree. Like, I mean, again, a lot, a lot of the stuff is around what are the sorts of things that you can do to kind of deal with it. And, and so, you know, again, there's from, 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 you know, what should I consider when a child or a grandchild comes along? I think it gives you an opportunity and permission to sit back and go, Okay, if I had my time again, or um, mm. you know, what what are some of the things that I would like to do or to be able to do in yeah. time? Yeah, write that down, work it out, come and talk to someone. Like it's yeah. not, it doesn't need to be um, horrendously expensive, or it just it's just that to try and capture that moment. But when you've got a new baby. Mm. I think usually sleep's usually the one that you want to get a hold of. Right? <laughs> I just want a nap. You know, the, nap the philosophical nap. side of life. Yeah, I don't need a bond for the education. I just want an eight-hour sleep. If Correct. You don't oh, no, there's no chance of that. You have got no hope. <laughs> just you've yeah. got years of just that's when you yeah. need to go on a holiday with your father yeah. and then you might get some sleep. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All, All right, right. Well, do you want to wrap up on anything else, Alex? 
Oh no! Look, I, I think we've we've touched on all the things I want to touch on. I just think it's a time to reflect on your on what you want to achieve in your life and put pl- plans in place to make those things happen. Yep. Um, not just to make as much money as you can, but to you know to to uh, to spend time with your, your kids or your grandkids and spend yep. time um, on the the bits of the business that you like. Delegate the rest to other people and uh, and then put you know so you can put some savings plans or an education bond or, or all those things in place for the long term education and welfare of the the kids. Kids, then the earlier the better. I mean, a dollar you put in, in invest now is going to pay off, you know, because of compounding interest. The Correct. earlier you start in all of these things, the better you, you, your, your outcome. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, certain things are just getting more and more expensive. Yeah, they sure are. They're yeah. not going the other way. Yeah. All right, well, that's a wrap for today. Um, thank you once again for the knowledge right, that we put Dave. around there, and we'll catch up next time. Okay. Thanks, Alex.